I'm going to go over your test review. As always, I don't suggest that you watch the entire thing. I really suggest that you just fast forward to the ones that you need help with. So first of all, it says draw a parallelogram ABCD. So AB is 3x plus 17. BC is 4x minus y. CD is 2y. And DA is 4. Um, we will not have system problems on your test, but it's always a good idea to practice them. So remember, opposite sides are congruent on all parallelograms, so you set the opposite sides equal to each other. Now, in order to make something go away, first of all, we need um, both of these equations to look the same, meaning that there is an x on and a y on the left and a number on the right. On this one, we need to get an x and a y on the left and a number on a y on the right. So in order to do that, we need to move this to y over here and move this 17 over to the other side. So I'm going to put the 17 over on the right, so this cancels. But I'm also going to take this 2y and put it over on the left, so that cancels. Meaning that it will be 3x minus 2y is equal to negative 17. So now our equations actually look alike. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one and multiply it times a negative 2, and that way my y's will cancel out. So we'll end up with negative 8x plus 2y is equal to negative 8. Now I'm going to take this one and put it underneath. So that's 3x minus 2y is equal to negative 17, and I will add them together. Negative 8x plus 3x is negative 5x. Negative 8 plus a negative 17 is negative 25. Um, then we need to divide by negative 5 on both sides. So x is 5. Now that we know x, we plug it back into one of the original problems, either this one or this one. And it doesn't matter which one you plug it into. You just plug it in and solve. I'm going to do... The first one, so 3, and instead of x, I'm going to put 5, plus 17 is equal to 2y. 3 times 5 is 15. 15 plus 17 is 32. Divide by 2 on both sides, and y is 16. So again, you're not going to have a systems equation on your test, but it's always a good idea to keep that there because you're going to end up having to do systems in Algebra 2. And in fact, in Algebra 2, you won't just have two equations, you'll have three. And you won't just have x and y, you'll have x, y, and z. So it's a good idea to practice it now because you're going to be expected to know it in Algebra 2. A, B, C, D is a parallelogram if the measure of B, A, C... So this angle right here is 4x minus 17. If the measure of DCA, so DCA, this angle right here is 2x plus 14. And the measure of DAC, so this one here is 45 degrees, then what is the measure of ADC? A D, C. So this one, we are trying to figure out that. So first we need to figure out what X is, and then we can use just this triangle to figure out what that angle is, because all the angles of a triangle had to be 180. Now this angle and this angle, remember these are parallelograms, right? So this is parallel lines, cut by a transversal, and those are alternate interior angles. So they are congruent. 4x minus 17 is equal to 2x plus 14. Subtract 2x on both sides. 2x minus 17 is equal to 14. Add 17 to both sides. 2x is equal to uh, 31. Divide both sides by 2. And x is 15 and a half. So we need to figure out what this angle measure is. So we're going to plug that back in to find the measure of um, DCA. So 
So 2 times 15 and a half plus 14, which means that it's 31 plus 14, which means that it's 45 degrees. All right, so to figure out the measure of angle D, or the measure of ADC, which is what we're asking, you do 180 minus both of those 45s. So the measure of angle ADC is equal to 90 degrees. So this parallelogram is actually either a rectangle or a square, because all of these angles are 90 degrees, all of the corner angles. Okay, if O, N, L, M, N, M, and O, L are all those things, find the values of X and Y for which L, M, N, O must be a par parallelogram. So let's go ahead and draw it. L, M, N, O. O, N is 8X minus 3. L, M is 5X plus 6. N, M is X plus 19, and OL is 8Y plus 6. So let's solve for X first using the top and the bottom. Those are congruent, so 8X minus 3 is equal to 5X plus 6. Subtract 5X on both sides. 3X minus 3 is equal to 6. Add 3 to both sides. And 3x is equal to 9, divide by 3, and x is 3. Now let's do the other ones. You set them equal to each other. So 8y plus 6 is equal to x plus 19, but we know what x is. x is 3, so I'm going to replace that with a 3. So 8y plus 6 is equal to 22. Subtract 6 on both sides. 8y is equal to 16. Divide by 8 on both sides. And y is 2. Alright, so we have a rectangle. E, F, G, H, and the diagonals. Intersect at J. Find the value of X. So first we have H, E, G. So H, E, G. So that would be this angle right here. And then G, E, F. So G, E, F. That would be this angle right here. So both of those angles added together should be 90 if it's a rectangle. So we're going to add them together and set them equal to 90 degrees. 12x plus 6x is 18x. 1 minus 1 is 0, so 18x is equal to 90. Divide 18 on both sides, and x is 5. For the next one, hf is this diagonal, and then eg is this diagonal and diagonals of rectangles are congruent so we're going to set them equal to each other so 6x minus 10 is equal to 5x minus 4 subtract 5x on both sides and you have x minus 10 is equal to negative 4 add 10 on both sides and you end up with x is 6 All right, JF is this part of the diagonal, and then EG is the whole diagonal. So we have to double JF in order to be the same as EG. So 2 times 8X plus 4 is equal to 24X minus 8. All right, distribute that 2. 16x plus 8 is equal to 24x minus 8. Subtract 16x on both sides. And then that's for 8x minus 8. Add 8 to both sides. 
and that 16 is equal to 8x, divide by 8 on both sides, and x is 2. Oh, we're still using the same? Okay, 4 through 8, sorry. Uh, e, F, G, or H, F, G, sorry. H, F, G, so that's this angle right here, is 40. So we need to find G, E, F, G, E, oh wait, no. G, E, F, G, E, F. So it wants this angle which will be the same as this angle. They're always going to be the same like that. Um, so in order to find this one, we're going to subtract 40 from 90. So the measure of angle GEF is equal to 90 minus 40, which is 50 degrees. All right, FH is 36. There's FH. FH uh, is 36. And then FG. Where's FG? FG is FH divided by 2. Find HG. So remember, this is 90 degrees, so we have to do Pythagorean theorem. So HG squared plus FG squared is equal to FH squared. So that means whenever we work this, we have HG squared plus FH over 2 squared is equal. Oh, but we know what FH is. So I'm going to replace FH with 36 here. 36 is equal to FH squared, so 36 squared. 36 divided by 2 is 18. And then 18 squared is 324. 36 squared is 1296. Subtract 324 from both sides. And you get H G squared is equal to 972. And then take the square root of both sides. So H G is, um, this is the same thing as the square root of 324 and then the square root of 3? Yeah. And then the square root of 324 is 18. Now, you could have done the factor tree if you want to and done it that way. Um, a bunch of threes go into 972. So 972, oh wait, I have to clear this. Divided by 3 is 324. Divide that one by a 3, and you get 108. Divide that one by 3, and you get 36. 36 is 4 and 9, easier numbers to deal with. 4 is 2 and 2, and then 9 is 3 and 3. So if you were to do this the long way, it would be like that. So it would be 2 times 2 times how many 3s? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 3s. Oh, I wrote five. There we go. Two, three, four, five. So whenever you start pulling things out, a two comes, a three comes, and another three comes. And then that three stays under. <clears throat> three times three is nine, times two is 18 square roots of three. So that's how that happened. Now we have to draw a rhombus, PQRS. And they intersect at T. All right, so QPT. QPT is this angle right here. Find T. 
TSP. So TSP, that would be, oops, this angle right here. Um, so that this angle is going to be the same as this one. And this angle is going to be the same as this one. And both of them together would add to be 180. So all of the yellow angle. So the whole angle yellow, the measure of angle, we'll just say it's P because it's the whole angle, would be 2 times 40, which is 80. And then the whole measure of angle S can be found by doing 180 minus 80, which is 100 degrees. So that whole angle of measure S is 108, is 100 degrees. So to find the measure of angle TSP, you do 100 divided by 2, because those angles are bisected by the diagonals. So that's what this is going on. The, ang the diagonals bisect the angles. So in other words, this is what happened. This one is supposed to be 40, which means this one is also 40. You're supposed to be finding this one, but it's the same measure as this one. So you could have said that x plus x plus 40 plus 40 is equal to 180. That's another way you could have set up the problem if you want to do it completely algebraically, but you would get the exact same answer. All right, let me undo all that writing. Bear with me, sorry. I could have paused it and done this, I'm sorry. All right, um, so the next one is STP. STP is this central angle right here. Um, and those are always 90 because diagonals are perpendicular. So, oops, that's 90 degrees. All right, RQ and PQ. RQ and PQ, um, all sides of rhombi are congruent, so you set those sides equal to each other. Um, so 4x minus 1 <clears throat> is equal to 20 minus x, add x to both sides. 5x minus 1 is equal to 20. Add 1 to both sides. 5x is equal to 21. So divide by 5 on both sides. Um, and x is whatever 21 divided by 5 is. 4.2. I messed this up. This was plus x. Sorry. It should have been like this. And this would have been minus, minus. This would have been 3. So this would have been 3, and this would have been 3. Then divide everything by 3. So x should have been 7. I should have known it wasn't a nice, pretty answer. I apologize. Um, QP2, QPT, QPT, this angle right here, is 52. What is PQT? PQT, so this angle here. So this is very similar to that first one that we did. Um, if this one's 52, so is this one. And whatever this one is, so is this one. So you, and both of those angles together will add to be 180. So X plus X plus 52 plus 52 should be 180. All right, so 2x plus 104 is equal to 180. Subtract 104 from both sides. 2x is equal to 76. Divide by 2 on both sides. And x is 38. So that's the measure. It's 38 degrees. PQT, so PQ, 
QT is this angle right here. So that's this. QPS. So QPS is the whole angle. Is that one? Find PQR. Okay. So whatever this is, so is this one, and both of them added together is 180 degrees. So what'll happen is, remember that this one is the pink one, but we need to double this yellow one because this this here is also ye uh, yellow, like they would be the exact same measure. So you wanna make sure that it's the same also. So we would have two times four X plus six and then plus 10x plus six, and both of those together would equal 180 degrees. Distribute your two, so eight x plus six plus 10x plus six is equal to 180. Combine like terms, eight x plus 10x is 18 x, six plus six is 12. Subtract 12 on both sides. 18x is equal to 168. Divide both sides by 18. I messed this up again. I did not distribute 2 here. This should have been a 12. And then 12 plus 6 should have been 18. I knew something was wrong. It was giving me a funky decimal. All right. So, um, 180 minus 18 is 62, 162. And then 162 divided by 18 is 9. But that's what X is. Um, and we need to know what PQR is. So PQR, PQR is this entire angle. So we're going to double that yellow and plug in the X. So we're going to double this, and instead of x for the yellow one, we're going to put in 9, and then plus 6. 4 times 9 is 36. 36 plus 6 is 42, so double that. The measure of angle PQR is 84 degrees. All right, square ABC. All right, find the measure of BEC, BEC. Um, interior angles, well, diagonals are perpendicular, and so that will be 90 degrees. Find the measure of BDC. So BDC, B, BDC is this angle. And that's going to be half of that 90 degree angle, which makes it 45. And then AB is this side, and BC is this side. Squares, sides are congruent, so 3x minus 5 is equal to 2x plus 4. Subtract 2x from both sides x minus 5 is equal to 4, add 5 to both sides, and x is 9. All right, so now we have an isosceles trapezoid. Um, with bases of RS and TB. All right, so it says, and we have diagonals. Um, VS is this, and VS is this diagonal, and then TR, TR is this diagonal. Diagonals on isosceles trapezoids are congruent. So we're gonna set these equal to each other and solve. Subtract three Y from both sides. 2y minus 9 is equal to 5. I've ran out of room. 
add 9 to both sides. 2y is equal to 14, divide by 2, and y is 7. All right, then it says that TSR, so TSR, that would be this angle right here, is 100. Um, find the measure of VTS, so VTS. So remember that, um, oh, that is, just to make it clear, is this angle right here. Remember those angles are supplementary. So to find the measure of VTS, you just do 180 minus 100, oops, minus, not equals, minus, there we go. Um, so it's 80 degrees. Okay, so TR, where's TR? That's this diagonal, and VS is the other diagonal. So same thing again, um, set them equal to each other and solve. Subtract 2x from both sides. x plus 3 is equal to 6. Subtract 3 on each side. x is 3, and so vs... You would plug 3 back in. That's 9 plus 3. So that's 12. Was that supposed to... Oh no, it just said find y. Okay. Um, given parallelogram KNOD. So parallelogram KNOD with diagonals intersecting at y. It says that dn is 28. Then what is the measure of yn? Remember, diagonals bisect each other, so yn will be half of it. So 14. dn is 16. And then dy is that equation. So we need to double dy to make it the same as dn. So 2 times 1 half x minus 3 is equal to six, 16. Distribute. So x minus 6 is equal to 16. Add 6 to both sides. And x is 22. Then it says ODY, ODY, so that's this angle right here. And then YNK, YNK, so that's this angle right here. Well, this is a parallelogram, which means that these are parallel lines cut by a transversal, so those angles are opposite interior angles and are congruent. So the measure of Y in K is 36 degrees also. DO is here. And NK is up there. Opposite sides are congruent, so you set them equal to each other. Oops. 5x minus 3 is equal to 2x plus 9. Subtract 2x on both sides. 3x minus 3 is equal to 9. I've run out of room. Add 3 to both sides. 3x is equal to 12. Divide by 3. And x is 4, but it's asking for do. So we need to plug it back in. 5 times 4 minus 3. 5 times 4 is 20, so 20 minus 3 is 17. All right, NOD. NOD is this whole angle right here. And then the next one is ONK. ONK is this whole top angle. Remember that both those angles are supplementary, so we just need to add them together and set them equal to 180.
And what's DKN? D K okay. Um, DKN, DKN is this whole angle, which is going to be the same as that yellow angle because opposite side, opposite angles are congruent. So, um, DKN will be the same thing as NOD. So, to solve it, set them equal to each other and then plug it back in NOD. Subtract 2x from both sides. x is equal to negative 10. Ooh, I don't like that. That would give things negative degrees. Where are you at? O N K. I just want to make sure it's right. O N K is pink. And then N O D, N O D is yellow. And they are, so, oh, they're supplementary. You don't set them equal to each other. You add them together and set them equal to 180. I apologize. No wonder. 5x minus 10 is equal to 180. Add 10 to both sides. So 5x is equal to 190. Divide by 5. And x is 30. Uh, 5 will go into 48 times. 38. So to find the measure of angle DKN, that's the same as the yellow one, which was which one? Oh, NOD. So 2 times 38 minus 10. 2 times 38 is 76 minus 10. So that means the measure of angle DKN is equal to 66 degrees. Determine if each of the following is a parallelogram. Give a reason for why it is or why it is not a parallelogram. Well, first of all, um, because... If this is parallel lines cut by a transversal, those angles would be congruent. So we know that this is going to be parallel to that one. So that for sure is going to happen. And if those are parallel lines and both of the sides are congruent, it should give you a parallelogram. Oh, that's not necessarily true. Hold on. Oh, no, it would be. It would be. Um, so yeah, because those um, sides are parallel and because the opposite sides are congruent, then yes, it would be a parallelogram. So yes, and the reason is alternate interior angles prove parallel sides. And opposite sides are congruent. All right, so the next one, 140 and 40. So both of these together is 180 degrees. Um, so this one is a yes, because opposite sides are congruent and consecutive angles are supplementary. All right, this one is a no. If this had been seven, it would be yes, but it's not. So this one's a no because the diagonals don't bisect each other. And then 28, of course, yes, because opposite sides are parallel. Okay, trapezoid. It doesn't say isosceles, it just says trapezoid. So I'm just going to draw a generic one then. Um, with bases R, M, and C, A. So C, A, R, M. Oh, M, R. C, A, M, R. There we go. And its median is O, L. Okay, if RM is 8 and CA is 14, find OL. So remember that formula. This would be B1, this would be B2. And the formula is half of B1 plus B2. So you're taking the average of both. That's what happens. So half of 8 plus 14. 
8 plus 14 is 22, and half of that is 11. Um, CA is your B1. OL is actually your median, and then this is your B2. So you would have um, that your median is equal to half of B1 plus B, I'm sorry, mid-segment, not median, sorry, mid-segment. Um, I should call this mid. There. So 8 is equal to half of 12 plus, and we'll just go ahead and call it RM, but it is my B2. So let's multiply the whole thing by 2 to get rid of that half. Ooh, that's an ugly 2. There we go. So 8 times 2 is 16. It gets rid of that half, and it's 12 plus RM. Subtract 12 on both sides. So RM is equal to 4. All right, DN is a diagonal, and CM is the other diagonal, and diagonals are congruent on isosceles trapezoids. So this side is, of course, congruent to this one. That's what makes it an isosceles trapezoid. All right, x squared plus 6x is equal to 2x plus 12. Again, you will not have quadratics on your test, but it is a wonderful idea to practice them because you will need to know them for Algebra 2. So x squared plus 4x minus 12 equals 0. I'm going to move that over here. We need to come up with factors of 12. So which one will give you 4? A positive 6 and a negative 2 will give you 4. So this turns into x minus 2 and x plus 6 is equal to 0 x minus 2 equals 0, x plus 6 equals 0, add 2 to both sides, x is 2, subtract 6 from both sides, and x is negative 6. Now, what you need to do is plug these in and make sure that they make sense, and it always is better to try it on in this one, um, because this squared will make those negatives positive. Um, so, Whenever I plug it in um, to this one, 2 times negative 6 is negative 12. Well, negative 12 plus 2, 12 is 0. And you can't have a 0 length on an object that clearly exists. So this is our only answer. It cannot be negative 6 because that won't make sense. And even if you plug it into the first one, negative 6 squared is 36. And then... 6 times negative 6 is negative 36, which again would give you 0. And you can't have 0 for a side length. So only the 2 is a possible answer. Again, you're not going to have one of those on your test, but it's always a good um, idea to practice. C and M. C and M is this angle right here. And then NCD. NCD is this angle here. Those angles are supplementary. So all you have to do is 180 minus 88 to find that the measure of NCD is 92. All right, CDM, CDM is this angle. NCD, NCD is this angle here. Those angles are supposed to be congruent. So you set them equal to each other and solve. So 8x minus 24 is equal to 6x plus 22. Subtract 6x on both sides. 2x minus 24 is equal to 22. Add 24 to both sides. 2x, that cancels, is equal to 40. 6 divide by 2, and x is 23. But we need to find the measure of CDM, so we got to plug it back in. 6 times 23 plus 22. So 
So 6 times 23 is 138 plus 22 means that the measure of angle CDM is equal to 160 degrees. An advertisement claims that a television has a 56 inch screen, which would be the length of the diagonal of the screen. Um, if the screen is 40 inches long, find the height of the screen to the nearest hundredths. So Pythagorean theorem, x squared plus 40 squared is equal to 56 squared. 40 squared is 1,600, 56 squared is 3,136, subtract 1,600 from both sides, x squared is equal to 1,536, take the square root of both sides, And it gives you, hold on, we got to reduce that thing. So what will happen is it's the same thing as um, the square root of 256 times the square root of 6, and the square root of 256 is 16. So it should be like this, and it's inches, of course. Um, if you weren't sure how to do that, you could, of course, go 1536, and uh, it's obviously divisible by 2, and you could start with 2s. Um, 2 will go into 157 7 times with 1 left over, 2 will go into 13 6 times with 1 left over, and 2 will go into 16 8 times. And then, of course, 2 will go into this one, which would be 3... 8, 384, 2 will go into that one, mm. 1, and then 1 left over, 2 will go into 18 9 times, and then 192. And then of course 192 is 2, and 96, and then 2, and... Two will go to nine, 48 times. 48 is finally a number that's an easy one to come up with. That's eight and six. Eight is four and two. This is two and two. And six is two and three. And then you would put all that under a square root and pull out what you can. So there's one three. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine twos. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All of these come out. And the only thing that's left is three times two, which is six. And two times two is four. Two times two is four. Four times four is 16. So that's how the 16 square roots of six happened. If you can't do it, um, in your head. Find the number of sides of a convex polygon that uh, if the measure of its interior angles has a sum of 2880. Well, the formula for that is n minus 2 times 180. So we're going to set that equal to that. Divide both sides by 180 to get rid of it. So 2880 divided by 180 is 16. Add 2 to both sides, and n is 18. So it's an 18 gone. Find the sum of the measures of the interior angles of an oct octagon. So that's 8 sides, so 8 minus 2 times 180, which is 6 times 180, which is 1080 degrees. Find the number of sides of a regular polygon with each interior angle equaling 135. So that formula is n minus 2 times 180 divided by n is equal to 135. Multiply both sides times n to get that out of the denominator. So 
distribute 180. So 180 in minus 360 is equal to 135 in. Subtract 135 in on both sides. So 45 in minus 360 is equal to zero, and I've run out of room. Add 360 to both sides. 45 in is equal to 360. Divide both sides by 45. And n is 8. So it's an octagon. Find the measure of an interior angle and an exterior and an exterior angle of a regular heptagon. The measure of an interior angle. So 1. That's heptagon is 7 minus 2 times 180 divided by 7. This is one interior. 7 minus 2 is 5. Five times 180 is 900. And 900 divided by 7 is 128.6. That's one interior angle. For one exterior angle, you just do 360 divided by the amount of sides. So 360 divided by 7 is 51.4. Find the measure of one exterior angle of a regular 18 and gone. So 360 divided by 18 is 20 degrees. The measure of one interior angle of a parallelogram is 42 degrees more than twice the measure of another angle. Find the measure of each angle. So remember that parallelograms have op their opposite angles are congruent. So if this one's 42 degrees, this one is also 42 degrees. And the other two, um, 42 degrees more. Oh, wait. Hold on. This is X. This is X. 42 degrees more than twice the measure. So 2x plus 42, 2x plus 42. So this is what my parallelogram looks like. But if you remember, these two add to be 180. So you don't have to deal with all four, unless you just want to, you can. Um, but you only have to deal with the two. So 2x plus 42 plus x is equal to 180 degrees. So 3x plus 42 is equal to 180. Subtract 42 on both sides. 180 minus 42 is 138. Divide that by 3. And x is 46. So it's 46 degrees. And then the other one is 2 times 46 plus 42. 2 times 46 is 92 plus 42 is 134 degrees. And that's the end of your review.